Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you stuck with us this far, I bring you to the last episode of this Let's Play for the Sonic side, for now. We're going to be tackling Death Egg Zone, Act 1 and 2, and the final boss of the game, Eggman, for the last time. Death Egg Zone has the hardest bosses, Death Egg Zone has the most interesting level layout in terms of gimmicks that they have. Death Egg Zone has a lot, but it doesn't have music like Metropolis Zone, and that's that, that's the biggest problem. See, I, I, I like Death Egg Zone's theme. I do. It's not bad. It's it's nice to listen to. It's got a very techno-ish rock feeling to it. But... I liked Metropolis Zone more. And I don't like Scrap Brain Zone, so... I guess I'm just a weird Sonic fan. Although I know most people prefer Sonic 2 as a game. I prefer Sonic 3 as the game. But I like the Sonic 2 music. At least Metropolis Zone a little bit better. It's not to say that Death Egg Zone isn't a bad theme though. It's fun. It's nice. It just doesn't have the same hook that uh, Metropolis Zone had. It's really, really nice. In fact, honestly, if I had to be honest, it kind of feels like discount Metropolis Zone. Like, a little bit. But, I, I feel like that's more a result of the fact that they're trying to mimic the same musical style for each of their levels, for the endgame levels, to try to get that techno rock theme, the mix of industrial music and hard work, I guess. I don't know. It's pretty much whatever you would expect a mad scientist from the 90s to be you know, listening to. What do we call it? Alt Nirvana. Weird Science. Oingo Boingo. I don't know. I don't listen to a lot of those bands. Again, it's not such a bad song. It's a pretty good song. Death Egg Zone in particular, however. Interesting level layout. Really hard bosses. Doesn't necessarily make them fun. <laughs> I find challenge fun, but I can see how people would uh, want to remove their hair and scalp by force by playing with some of these bosses, because it's nuts. Oh god. They're just downright abusive is what they are. Also, this level is very unforgiving. The light bridges that just disappear randomly, the random paths that'll pop up, the friggin' turrets that fire rockets at you like... 24-7 every time you're dropping down something, the lightning floors, it's all very much designed to kill you. In fact, there are quite a few uh, bottomless pits littered throughout the level 2 that you can uh, fall into if you're not paying close attention. And then we come to this room, which when I was a kid, I hated. And when I say kid, I mean like, middle school kid. I couldn't friggin' stand this. The first time I got to this level, I was in middle school, and I must have safe stated on that spot nine or ten different times, because I could just, I could always get the edge buttons, I could always get the four edge buttons, but lining myself up with the center became, I guess in a way, my life's goal and my biggest problem, because I could not, with being off screen, I could not, I couldn't see it that easily, I, could, I had terrible prediction, so I could never hit it. So I would literally wind up timing out and reloading a save state. And I'm going to cheat by using the gimmicks that are available to me in the ROM hack. And hit that switch that you don't necessarily have to hit. Or hit that uh, checkpoint that you don't have to hit. And we're going to beat what is arguably the hardest boss in the game. And we're going to do it without hypersonic again. Because I don't want to play cheaty. So, I don't know what this boss is called. I'm going to call it Core Eye. Redo! Core Eye just gave me a redo. And, uh, Core Eye is a pain in the ass. Because... Landing a hit on it is... I don't want to say it's random, but it's hard to do. As you saw before, when I make running leaps at it, sometimes I'll just phase through where I think the hitbox is. And I won't hit it. If you want, I, I've kind of discovered that if you want to make sure that you're guaranteed a hit, wait till the attack, wait till it drops the little spheres, 
and then try to line yourself up with how far out they reach. You can hit it once when they first drop down and once after they launch their attack. And their attack is they basically just rotate around the base and expand. And then once you beat that, you get to move on to Act 2 of the boss fight, which is attacking the giant floating platforms with spikes. This one's actually a lot easier than you would think. Really, all you have to do is just stay on the platforms, and you can't lose this fight. If you don't stay on the platforms, however, you will lose this fight. Well, you have a better chance of losing the fight, I should say. But, that laser will never actually reach you if you're on the side. It will just go to as close as it can to you, and then it will instantly reset. So if you want to kind of cheese the boss, you can kind of just get it. But how to get a corner and forcing it to um, calm itself down every time you hit it. And I hit the pause button. I don't know why, but I did. That's the problem with post-commentary. You don't know why you do things. You just kind of have to assume. Bye, Tails. Again. I guess Tails is just not built for Act 2s. And now we move on to the easier act, kind of. In terms of layout, I know Death Egg 2 a lot more, but in terms of, um, what's the phrase I'm looking for? I know the layout a lot better in terms of how it actually runs, but when you throw in the gimmicks of flipping the stage upside down, it kind of becomes a bit more of an issue. Although, I will give them this. Unlike other games where they flip the stage upside down, they don't reverse the controls on you entirely. What they do is... Well, they reverse the controls, but... If you press right, you're still going right. And if you press left, you're still going left. So it's not literally inverting the controller. It's just kind of pretending you are. Which is nice. I do enjoy that. Also, these platforms are kind of a gimmick. Uh, you have to stand on one edge or the other to make them start going up or down. And if you stay too long, they'll fall into the, uh, I guess, the space, sky, whatever you want to call it. They'll fall into the void, the unknown. The to be continued. Eesh. This is a fun level, but it does drag on. Granted, I'm pretty sure you can breeze through these levels both relatively fast, but I'm terrible at these... I'm terrible at the later parts of this game because I don't have as much experience in them. So, um... I apologize if you're looking for a super skilled speedrunner. I'm just a nerd who likes to play Sonic and knows random... likes to have stupid conversations about himself and various things that he thinks... Let's go with a random thought of the day. Next time you have a fortune cookie, remove the fortune and fill the fortune cookie with Hershey's syrup, then eat. It's actually a lot better than you might think it is. Oh, also, hot sauce and mac and cheese go surprisingly well together. You can save 15% or more on your car insurance by actually bothering to look at the interest rates. Uh, let's see, what other life advice can I come up with? Don't do drugs, kids. You'll wind up in the White House. And not the good one. Come on! We're almost done! We can do it! We can do it! Of course. Ugh. Watch, it fell. It was the last chance we had to lo or leap off of the falling platform, and we made it. Barely. Ah. Eesh. I'm starting to fall apart. My back hurts. And so do a lot of my muscles. But... 
we are almost through this level, and we are almost to the boss fight. Almost. Eesh. Sorry this is a little bit uh, less, shall we say, vocal than my other commentaries. I'm suffering from some issues, and it's making it hard for me to um, continuously speak. I've got a torn rotator cuff on my right shoulder, and I'm pretty sure my left shoulder has a tear in the back part of my... or on the back part of my shoulder, because... On my right, it's actually on the shoulder, but on my left, it's actually more like down by where my spine is. So it's making me, it's making it hard to focus on what I'm doing. But I'm trying to keep a good spirit, and honestly, if I wasn't doing this, I would be s complaining until I went to the doctor. So, may as well get my mind on something, right? Besides, we're almost done. And nothing can really piss me off in this. That's what we call foreshadowing. <clears throat> but we finally made it to the end and now we're going to start the boss fight So for the absolute longest time I thought the only way to damage this boss was to flip gravity turns out that's not the case And I don't know if this was just something that was added in on this game or if it's something that was in the uh, main game but if you spin dash into the uh, Robots as if you spin dash into the flipped upside down robots, you can actually launch them into the uh boss and it will do damage to him i literally used to play this boss entirely just by waiting until he was lined up with the robots and then flipping gravity on him like that so they'd fall into him i know i'm such a scrub but it works and i actually managed to get pretty good at it too but i will admit this is hands down the easiest way to take care of him also probably the most fun Although, if you do actually manage to be able to take him out... Excuse me. With just flipping gravity on him, you should record it and get it done in under 10 minutes. But, we have finally come to the actual final boss. Some of you may be familiar with this design. It's actually relatively popular. And if you see what I was talking about earlier, it's literally just the other side of the hands. And these are also incredibly easy to take out. You don't even need to jump over them. You can literally just sit there and spin dash, and they won't damage you. It's like that in the base game, too, and I don't know why. But it makes for some really easy way to uh, speed run it if you want to go that way out. See? His fingers are already gone. Now it's just a game of leaping over the fire snot that he shoots at you, activating the emerald core, hitting the emerald, and leaping over the laser that it fires. It's a lot more doable than it looks, I promise. Yeesh. Tails, you're gonna be the death of me. No! You stupid! Fucking twin tailed absolute abomination of video game mankind! Why the fuck did you do that? Oh my god! I'm gonna fucking rip my hair out! You waste of fucking programming! You are a waste! I fucking hate you! Now that that's out of my system, let's try again. <sighs> and you know, even though I have to put up with that, I still always play the game with Tails. I know, I know, it, it, it makes no sense. But I do. Even though he calls me the biggest pain in the ass that I could probably imagine. It's almost like playing with a little brother that I never had. Yeah. It's kind of depressing. But... You know, I never expected someone who's younger than you, who you're teaching to play the game. Because you don't, you wouldn't let your sibling play as Sonic. He plays Tails. But 
When you're dealing, letting someone who you're teaching to play the game play Tails, they're bound to make mistakes and screw you up. They get better, but not always. So I can kind of, even though I want to scream and shout and complain and rage at the TV screen, I can kind of, you know, still sympathize and accept that Tails is going to screw me over because that's what Tails does. He tries his best. He does what his AI programming allows him to, but in the end, he's just not as good as you. So I'll still play with him, but my blood pressure significantly rises every time I do. <laughs> and with that, we've taken out Eggman. <laughs> okay, no, hold on, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. We gotta do this the right way, hold on. Here we go. This'll be more fun. So, I've officially decided to record the ending with a little bit of a music remix. Something that makes it feel a little bit more grand and epic and interesting. And if you're a fan of Super Mario Bros. you know what this is. If if you're a fan of Sonic, you probably know what this is too. But this is Project Chaos's Doomsday Zone remix. This is my favorite remix of Doomsday Zone, and I decided why not include it, just because eh, it's my playthrough. I can do what I want. But uh, I'm gonna sync it up and make sure everything looks really cool and really nice, and hope that things turn out okay. But yeah, it should be fun. And so, Doomsday Zone, as you can see, I am now hypersonic, and if you pay close attention, you'll notice that I am dashing across the screen. Yeah, um, regular supersonic can't do that. Which makes hypersonic very useful for this fight, because it means you can avoid things a lot easier. Unfortunately, I'm just not good at avoiding things. What is it if you uh, leave a bunch of monkeys alone in a room with a typewriter? They statistically have a probability of coming out with Romeo and Juliet eventually. Well, uh... In my case, it's more akin to, um... If you leave a monkey alone in a room with a typewriter, at some point he might possibly be able to understand how to play the game. Or he might at some point possibly be unable to... Or, uh, blah, blah, blah. I can't speak. Hey, I kicked Eggman's ass, right? Well, not exactly. There's a part two. And, uh, part two is just as annoying. <laughs> Only this time you get to collect rings while you're doing it. Yeah, uh, you... I recommend trying to shoot for at least 80 rings if you're going to, uh, or before you encounter Eggman for the first time in this fight. Mostly because that gives you, if you screw up and you're not good like me, that gives you a little bit of room to buffer around and work with. I'm pretty sure you could do it with just the 50 that it gives you, but you would need to have 50 by the time you get up to Eggman. But uh, you see, I'm kind of hanging around at around 20 range, and uh, this part of the fight is a little bit easier because all you have to do is ram into him. You don't have to guide those missiles into him, but you do have to avoid the bombs that he's shooting at you, which eh, can make some things hard. But as long as you keep you're, as long as you keep an eye on your ring counter and pay attention to what's going on with Eggman, you'll be able to take him out. And with that, guys, I bring you to the final scenes of the game. We have reobtained the Master Emerald from Eggman. We have met up with Tails. We've descended from our hyper form, and we're going to fly back to Angel Island and give Knuckles his Emerald back. All's well that ends well. Or at least... We'd like to think it ends well. But what happens to the island? Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching this, because I really did enjoy making it. It was a lot more fun and required a lot more work than I thought it would, but I actually enjoyed doing it. It was, it was, it was... It was fulfilling something that I've always wanted to do, because I've always wanted to put this game onto the YouTube Let's Play community. 
just because it means something to me. And our final scene in the game is Sonic and Tails flying off with Knuckles saying goodbye to his new friends, knowing that wherever they may be, he's always got a hand when he needs it. And now we move on to the credits with a little medley of all the music that we heard in the game. And now I'm supposed to talk about how I felt and how the game made me feel. And it's just a fun game. If you haven't played it yet, you're really doing yourself a disservice by not picking it up. If you have played it... Oh, also, by the way, Sonic is fixed on the plane. In the basic game, Sonic is backwards because they just flipped the sprite. But yeah, they fixed Sonic. So now it says Sonic the right way. But... I'm just nitpicking, I guess, or, you know. I guess that's not even a nitpick. It's just one of those minor things that you'd notice. But, yeah, if you really haven't played this game yet, you're doing yourself the huge disservice by not picking it up. And if you have played it, pick it up and play it again. It's about time. It's a really fun game. It deserves to be played at least one more time before you die. The music is great, the levels can make you want to tear your hair out, but once you get the memorization down, because that's what Sonic games are all about, it's all about memorizing levels. Levels I have vaguely memorized, I do pretty well on. Levels that I don't memorize at all, I don't... I couldn't do... Uh, you saw, so, yeah. Ugh. But, overall, it was a fun experience, and I can't wait until I get to do it again, whenever I decide to do it again. Maybe that'll be sometime soon. I don't know. I know for right now, though, that I had a blast recording this. I hope you guys had fun watching it, and Sky Sanctuary Zone. My next Let's Play is going to be Sonic Mania, so keep an eye out for that. And at some point, I will be doing a Knuckles playthrough of this game. Uh, probably after Sonic Mania. Or I might step away from Sonic for a bit, because that would be my f fourth playthrough of a Sonic game on a channel with now three playthroughs. Soon to be four. Ooh. Uh, what a game. And you know... This game just got left me with many fond memories. And it's given me a lot to look back on and remember when I get older and go senile and can't remember how to play video games anymore. But I hope you guys enjoyed the Let's Play. I really hope that you had fun, and I hope that you'll stick around for my next one. This was Sonic 3 and Knuckles Complete, and this is Nobody. I'll catch you next time.